Now, the band I'm going to talk about now, fortunately, we still have all the original members with us, and three of them are still in the bands, and it's a band that's been talked, song and verse on a lot of these channels, and it's Cheap Trick. And I, I love this band. This is my favorite album, is the self-titled debut. Now, they have a second album that's self-titled, 1997. That album's very good as well. The song I'm going to go with is Hot Love. Hot Love rocks like hell. It's very very fast you got a great vocal performance from robin zander here the song just it just grabs you by the throat and it doesn't let go for the two minutes and 30 seconds that it goes on this album is a i like to say treasure of riches no not did not sell very well early on it took them three albums or the live album to really for them to really break through live at budokan but this is a 10 out of 10. Their first three albums are 10 out of 10s for me. They already had the, the great songs there because they were writing for years. and years. Rick Nielsen was writing for years and years. And um, this more power pop list, again, Hot Love, Cheap Trick, 1977. Oh, great song. Great song. I, uh, I love Cheap Trick. Um, I think the glory run was right up to maybe All Shook Up. And then after that, it was patchy, to be quite frank. Yeah, they would put out some good material. I know there's some folk on other channels, which I won't mention, that are very much a um, in the cheap trick have done some masterpieces or great albums since. But no, I'm of the view that um, All Shook Up is probably the beginning of the, um, you know, Jumping the Shark. Dream Police is the last great album in my books. But um, that era is just timeless and that's what they built their reputation on and unfortunately they just seem to have this perennial uh second tier band status where they should be regarded at the front tier uh, right up at the top they should be like regarded as a headliner not as a, a third bill in a in a, um, a concert scenario power pop hard rock heavy metal there's been so many people that have been touched by cheap trick and that's a great song. And they were the masters, I mean, you know, of doing these really catchy, hooky pop songs. And I don't think it's contrived, whether it comes out of two minutes or four minutes or five minutes, they just had the ability and the knack. And that was a golden period in the 70s where they could just, just do it seamlessly. It's just when they started getting outside riders and when the hits dry up, you try too hard. And I think they were trying too hard. Well, okay. Well, I agree. I agree halfway. Um, yes. When they got the outside writers, it changed the band. They were not the same band. I think the worst albums they made were the ones with the outside writers. Um, but they have released great albums since then. Not as good as the first three. But maybe not even as good as the first four. But I think they're still, I think their last album in another world was excellent. I mean, I the, that one, the latest, the album's called The Latest from 2016. Mm. That album's great too. Maybe heard a little bit by a muddled production, but they have made some great albums since they didn't sell. But, mm. um, people, but us fans who've loved them forever really dig them and see them for what they are. But you're right. What they did in the seventies, uh, you can't touch them. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. touch them. Yeah, just just brilliant, really, then, like really good. Said, there is and there is some mediocrity in the catalog. I mean, some of their not all their late albums are great. They made they made a couple late albums that mm. weren't so high. And uh, just to echo your sentiments about them being like a second tier band, I'm going to see them in a week, and they're playing. They're going to headline, and they're playing a 700-seat theater. Well, May, they should be playing a 20,000-seat auditorium. Seriously, that's how highly I rate them. I agree they, with you. Yeah, it's just, it's just, just, I just can't work it out. And it's going to be the one night. of those bands in 20 years' time where people will look back and go, gee, they were fantastic, and they're yeah. gone. It's too late. 
And the night before, they were opening for Rod Stewart at a at a at the Beth, Bethel Woods, hmm. where I've seen many shows, and that holds you know fifteen twenty thousand people. Ah, uh, you know, like you got a Rod Stewart crowd. Will they just sit politely, clap? You well, know what I mean, it's just. Well, I can I can I can answer that for you, Peter. Yes, because I saw them open for Rod Stewart last summer. And the thing about Cheap Trick is they're one of the few hair legacy bands out there that mix their set, up, set list up every night. So mm -hmm. they're coming out and playing all this old deep cuts, mm -hmm. and I'm going crazy. And I look around, everybody I'm with, like everybody in the crowd, and they're all sitting on their hands. Yeah, They're waiting for the hits, yeah. which they don't play until the end. But they're doing um, Baby Loves to Rock and songs off of the new album and songs off of um, We're All All Right and a deep cut from Dream Police. And, you know, you know they're just like talking to their friends. And I'm loving it. Yeah, I know. I'm going off on a little tangent here. So when grunge came, there were certain bands that got a, an uplift, an uptick with, um, you know, um, bands like Nirvana citing them as a an influence like kurt cobain like Sabbath. kurt cobain like cheap trick why didn't they get an uptick and another thing with cheap trick the critics love them generally i mean that 70s period um oh, yes. you know all the uh, the snobbish critics of the nmes melody makers etc etc have always regarded cheap trick as a uh, you know top-notch quality why has not that translated into like um sabbath like a powerhouse where it's been rolling and you know generation upon generation discover them and they build up a fan base again because sabbath were on the skids but then nirvana created this uptick what's what's different with with cheap trick why didn't they get a, an uptick and get that cross-generational audience I don't know because if you look at their Smashing Pumpkins, a door sheet trick, and they yes. were taken around on tours with them when they were at their peak. So they're playing these big venues opening for Smashing Pumpkins. Even when Motley Crue, bands like Motley Crue went and came back, they were bringing cheap mm. trick out. Um, but, you know, they come out, they kick your butt for 45 minutes, and it just, they didn't it didn't go over i mean and if you think about it them and sabbath are very similar in the fact they had some great stuff early and then they had a lot of mediocrity in the middle yeah you know what i mean so i mean they don't have the greatest catalogs i mean they're not the most consistent catalogs but there's a lot of great stuff there but with sabbath it was just seemed like it got bigger and bigger the Osbournes probably helped Sabbath, if you want to be honest. And the fact that they put out their own festival and highlighted a lot of, mm. like, Ozfest and highlighted a lot of um, up-and-coming metal bands. And that was a great marketing move by yeah. Sharon Osborne. Yeah. Um, I think that, that certainly helped them. But, yeah, Cheap Trick, I mean, they got that, the, the hits in the late 80s and early 90s with professional songwriters and then commercially, it was a last gasp, you know, and it's a shame because they have a few duds, but most of their stuff is pretty solid to great. Yeah, look, I, I agree with you. Maybe people find it hard to categorize, are they pop, are they rock, are they hard rock? Because they do oscillate. Part of the um, two. Yeah, so it, it, that's the problem with a, a number of bands that uh, genre hop um people are very compartmentalized in regards to their musical taste not like us and not like a lot of rock day dream nation viewers but there well are some people are very um blinkered and you know they put bands in categories and the ones that you know kind of like the hardish rock I think cheap trick is uh, it's pop and therefore i yeah. dismiss but no, I just think it's an interesting case study where you had some real heavy hitters names in the 90s in grunge 
virtually giving a lifeline to a number of bands so they yeah. could have that cross-generational, um, you know, if you're on the operating table, they give you a little bit of oxygen and, oh, I'm alive yeah. again. There you it go. didn't seem to work for Cheap Trick. They've just been plateauing and playing at that sort of uh, lower tier status and it's a bit of a head scratch. It is. It's, it's, it's a shame. One of the best bands of our lives, you know? One of the great bands. Anyway, no little tangent. Interesting. There you go. Nice pick anyway, John. Thank you. Great tangent too, because it all made sense. It does. And sometimes it makes no sense at all. But <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. 